Okay, campers, rise and shine. We don't want to forget your booties out there because it's cold out there today. Well, it's cold out there ever. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It's Groundhog's Day. Can we get a copyright infringement for that? <laughs> Pull our YouTube channel. Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> if I know. All right. So, no, I don't know that we can get a copy. It's, it's just one of those where you got to accept it as it is. Oh, okay. um, he didn't even do the whole shtick. No, I didn't do the whole shtick as it takes a little bit of time. And I was actually wanting to have a little bit of um, I got you, babe, course. playing on the background there. Oh. That would have got us in trouble. That might have gotten us. It would have given us a YouTube violation, that's for sure. Yeah. So, well, welcome, everybody. Here we are, episode 27 of the Giuseppe Admins podcast, the podcast by and for Giuseppe Admins. My name is Lance Lennon. I am the technology director for the Eagle Grove Community School District, Eagle Grove, Iowa, a nice little school district up in north central Iowa. My name is Chad Ferrix. I am the director of technology for Adele DeSoto Minburn Community School District uh, right outside of Des Moines, Iowa. Go ahead, Phil. Okay. This is Phil Trimble, Pocahontas Area Community School District's IT director. Hey, I was just following the show notes. I was going to say, why yeah. do we have show notes, Carl? You were next. You were oh, next, I'm Carl. Sorry. sorry. I'm Carl Hare. I don't follow show notes. Um, I'm also the technology director for Ames Community Schools in Ames, Iowa, home of the Iowa State Cyclones. Go Cyclones. Oh, they've been playing good lately. They really have. Oh, they have. Although they almost got beat. The other night, by a team they shouldn't have got beat by, but but they won. They, and that's a matter. They did. They did pull it out. You don't get points for pretty. <laughs> Not in that game. No. Um. One thing I did want to talk about before we get into the show. Normally we kind of do a what's new topic and then start talking about different topics. This being Groundhog's Day, we are talking um, based on the, the the movie and what of what Groundhog reliving the same day. We're going to talk about some things we've talked about before. Kind of go back. That's really pretty, Chad. That's scaring me. We're going to talk about some things that we've talked about before. Um, not trying to be redundant, but some things have come up, some new things uh, about previous topics. So we're trying to relive those. We normally do a what's new, but we really want to hop into the show before or without going through that. But I did want to say one thing everybody's been kind of aware of, and now it's, it's even more so, it's in your face, that um, Google Plus is end of life. So one of the things that is great is our Giuseppe Admins community that is out there, the Google Plus community. If you have a personal account and you are a member of the community and are listening to this podcast with a personal account, you will not be able to be in that community after, I can't remember the date, I wish I, I didn't put that, I think it was April? Yeah, it's early in April. Yeah, so they're going to actually end of life for personal accounts. If you have um, a business account or a school account, it will still remain live. What they're really trying to do, from what I've heard, is kind of get rid of the bots, get rid of all of the, the, the spam that goes on in Google+. So I know our, our community will be affected. Um, I'm not 100% certain how many members we will lose, but I'm still seeing a large increase of people joining. Um, quite a few have been people that are joining again, I think coming in from their personal account, coming in with their school accounts. So the community will remain active. It is owned by, yep, Chad came in on his school account. It is, um, it is created by my school account, so it's going to remain one that's out there. So just be aware of that, Google Plus has been end of life. But getting right into our topics. So the number one thing I want to talk about um, is two-factor authentication. And I know we've talked about it in here before, and um, it's come up recently again in the community that people are asking, you know, are you making your staff use two-factor authentication? One of the arguments against it was staff pushback, and literally I think one person was talking about even being grieved by the union on it. And um, <laughs> I I have no doubt that you could be grieved by the union. I don't know if the grievance would be successful. And, and what so, I always try to tell people is they're accessing school equipment or using, you know, accessing school accounts. And you may be, get grieved that they're having to use their personal phone or something for the two factor. But that's what I want to talk about is, is um, things that when we talk, didn't talk about last time. We did talk about Yubico and their YubiKeys, but Google is actually <laughs> coming out with their own um, security two step thing also. And it is uh, the Titan security key and it comes in two uh, parts. One is an actual USB um, 
that you actually have to push in and, and, and then press your thumb finger or fingerprint on it. And then they had a Bluetooth one also to, to do two-factor authentication. So they have their own device, but that's something you might want to look into. I, I know some of you guys are, are using it. I've forced it on my staff. We are. All staff have to have two-factor. Uh, two what about you guys? Lance Lennon, we at ADM are currently going through the process of enforcing two-factor. Uh, oh, our, ours is going to be enforced the first day of spring break. That way, if someone doesn't quite make it, they are off, and it's going to uh, hopefully affect instructional time less. So um, we, we got processes in place and people in the wings ready to help those as the deadline approaches. Um, but we started our information process, sent out the initial email blast with links to a video and Google's instructions and all that stuff. Uh, but you're right, once in a while you get staff pushed back and we did the same. And I'm not as nice as you in suggesting the uh, <clears throat> the security keys. Um, there's always the option for them, as I tell those that are being a pain in the ass, that you can print out the paper coats and haul those around in your pocket. <laughs> and <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I, I'm not going to give someone a key. This is the way the world works now. And if you want to be a pain in the ass and not use your personal cell phone to receive a text message with a code on it, then I'll be in a pain in the ass right back and you can carry a piece of paper around. And hey, guess what? I am providing them printing privileges and paper <laughs> and, and toner to print those coats. So that is a school. Then you go. It is a, a school provided two-factor authentication methodology. It if is. you are listening in uh, to the podcast live, uh, the chat is open. Um, when we did ask who's doing two-step, um, Bog Patterson from Boone, Iowa, he said, nope. Um, oh, can you and print out the codes without entering your your cell phone number? Chad? No. You have to set it up the first time with a phone number and then switch your primary but, to the security codes. Hold on, though. But you can set up a landline so you can use yeah. a school telephone. They can call you with that initial code. It yeah. doesn't have to be your cell phone. Correct. Sorry, if so, I said cell phone, I misspoke, but... Yeah, you're right. Yep. We had two or three staff members. We had them use the one of the school phone up and they had some codes. Um, so we we have it enforced. Um, we're over a year into it now uh, for all staff. Um, and initially it was a little bit of a, a little bit of a lift. Um, anytime you try to get 700 adults all to do one small thing together is kind of a unique experience. Um, but uh it was, it was worth the effort. Um, I think it's definitely cut down on some things. Um, helps me sleep at night a little bit more. Um, we did allow some people, um, we, I told them about the Yubi keys. If they wanted to go buy one, I would set it up for them or show them how they could use it. But we didn't have anybody do that. Um, for the most part, it was just a matter of squishing some of the FUD, right? There are some people that are like, oh, Google's going to steal my identity and have access to my personal phone, and I'm doing personal phone on my uh, work stuff on my personal phone, and yada, yada, yada. And getting over some of that was took a little bit of work, but for the most part, the, the folks were pretty reasonable about it, and we got them in and got everything taken care of. Yeah, and I didn't get any pushback on on my district from people. Um, we were lucky enough to, to have had a very – uh, I guess a, a good story to, to tell them. We had a teacher who had lost, you know, so came to me one day and said, oh, my documents are gone out of my drive. And I was like, okay, what'd you do? And there was one document left in there. And that was, he had made a spreadsheet of all of his kids' passwords to a website. And so it was like, all of a sudden we realized someone had gotten in and gotten rid of his stuff and superintendent did the same thing. I was just like, Chad, he said, make it on a Friday that, that that's the cutoff date to have two factors set up. And if you don't have it set up on Friday, don't get them going until Monday. So they have to suffer for two days because you gave them two weeks. My biggest gripe with two-factor right now, of course, is when you, um, when you have it enforced and you set up a new user, is if they don't instantly go in on that first login to set up two-factor, they're logged, they're, they're blocked. Or if someone gets a new cell phone, 
then with a new cell phone number, you have to go in and turn it off and then turn it back on. So there's a couple of things that are pain in the butt on the back end, but far, far too little to to say that it's not worth the the, the security cool. that you gain. So what we have set up is we have, there's an option in there where you can say new users have two weeks to get it set up. That's why I was so, making this face. Yeah. Is, so when we, so you can when we set a line, you can set a window. Yep. So we set our window to two weeks. So when we set up a new account, so we hire a new teacher in the middle of the year, which that's something we do apparently here. Um, we send an email to them at their personal account. This is what your school district email is. This is where you're ever set up your two factor authentication. You got two weeks to get it ready to go. Um, and then if there's an issue, so they get a new cell phone or anything like that, you can go into the dashboard and generate codes for them that they can use to get in and then they can set it up with the new phone. That magic piece of paper with 10 codes on it that I allow them to print instead of <laughs> providing them with a key. Yeah. So Bog is in, like we did answer, you, you don't have to have a cell phone to do that one. He did ask, you know, he sees a problem again with his staff, not wanting to use anything personal for school or the other way around. And again, I guess it's, it's, like I said, you can use a school line to set up your account for two factor and then print the codes off and yep. just say, Hey, there you go. You want to not play right or not play the game the way I want you to play it, then you can play it with paper. So Lance, what do you know about those Titan security keys that Google has? So I've been looking at them while we've been talking here. They look like it's a Bluetooth and a USB key together. You can, it's not one or the other. No, I, so when I looked at it, when I and I just did a cursory glance at it, it, it looks like it's it's a because you can buy the either one separate also. But when you get it, it's a combined okay. pack, so you can use the Bluetooth as your two factor. Like literally, I think it is like it it as says you know enter your two factor and you press the button on the Bluetooth. It's the same as a Bluetooth keyboard to your computer and goes in, or the USB one where you put it in and then have to touch just like on the YubiKey. And I think the USB one is made by Yubico. Um, I'm not 100% certain, but I thought I read that too. So it's really pretty similar. I, the the Yuba keys, um, they they um, pretty cheap, and then they sell to education at 50% off too. So we did buy about 10 of those and offered it to up that if you want to do it, and nobody took us up on it. I have one that's set up, um, and I rarely use it. Matter of fact, most of them not even carrying it. I think I set it up for proof of concept. Um, but they are doing a um, webinar on the state of passwords and authentication security behaviors. Yubico is doing, Yubico's doing that and I will link it down below on YouTube in the no, show notes. I think I already have put it in there that if you wanna sign up for that webinar, I did sign up for that one. I just kinda try and keep myself up on that kind of stuff. But the Titan one itself, my guess is I think it's, I didn't, was it $30? Well, the two of them together, so they sell it in a bundle. Um, it's 50 bucks okay. for, for the, for the key and the little USB fob, um, Google has it on their on their store where you can get your Pixel along with a fancy uh, security key bundle. Yeah, I don't I don't need the Bluetooth one, um, but who knows? I mean, if you want to if you want to get real fancy, you can do that. Or and you Bob can print says, out a lot of paper I'm codes. Turning it on. Bog says sounds good. I'm turning it on right now. <laughs> Bog, talk to your uh, administrator before you do. Bog, that. you're gonna die. Yeah, don't turn it on right now. You're gonna want a whole process. He's he's <laughs> he's, open that, he's open for that snow day tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Enforced okay, immediately, and, Mark, and uh, no one can log in. We have another another listener. Mark is is watching, and he says the Titan is two keys, um, the Bluetooth and the regular USB. He has one, and he loves it, and it works with your phone too. So that's awesome. The Bluetooth works with your phone. So nice to know. Nice. That would be the nice thing. I guess, yeah, if you do need your two-factor authentication on your phone and you and you can't, I don't have a USB port on my phone. <laughs> but if, if you need two-factor on your phone and your phone is what's registered to your account, it just automatically goes through. If that's your primary one. It depends on what your primary two-factor authentication method is. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I suppose if you're like Carl and has to carry two phones around, it would carry, it would authenticate two phones around, Chad. It would authenticate the other one for you. What about yeah. you, Phil? You guys doing two factor up in Pokey? Definitely. Um, we started uh, was it about th three four months ago. Uh, it's been going really good. Um, not really any kickback on staff. Maybe one or two. Good. 
Yeah. It, the, the kickback you get and the pain in the butt it is is far outweighed by the security increase. We have a lot of crap in our Google ecosystem. And it's just going to continue to grow, especially for us as we transition things from Windows file shares to Google Drive, Team Drives, and otherwise. It Everything is just going to be in that Google account, and we can't afford not to have two-factor. The, the security issue, I mean, <clears throat> all of us, there must have been a password list leak last week because everyone started getting those emails by Google. So those password lists are just out there. Um, apparently someone tried to use it and Google found out and started spamming emails. Um, I got, I got a ton. Most of the majority of them were for, um, uh, old dead student accounts. Yeah. Uh, but then there's also that spam email going around from a hacker that has your username and password and knows that you're watching porn and you need to send him eight billion dollars in bitcoin <laughs> that's a lot of money because bitcoin is still worth a little bit eight billion bit um so the nice thing is and we talked about it last time too is if you do the two-factor and you log in on your device you can check the box that says remember this computer for 30 days and then you won't have to put in the two-factor authentication again for that 30-day period but I do want to say a caveat to that one is if you are using the Chrome tab, it, it will not save your password. It will not start, it will not recognize or save your two factor for 30 days. You do have to put your two factor in every time you log into that tablet. And on that note, it is the same as if it, if it goes to sleep and you have it set when you log, turn it back on and log back in, you have to do um, the two factor again. Yeah. So, and Mark says, uh, oh, what do I do for the student? What do you guys do for your student no use? Do you use two-factor for oh. your kids? So I allow it. So if they have it and want to set it up on their phone, they can do so. And based on the reports I'm running, some of them have, uh, which is good. So we can't, because right now you can't turn it on for just certain OUs. You can turn on enforcement for certain OUs. But if you want to have two-factor as an option, it's you have to turn it on for your entire domain. So we have some kids just like you that have taken the opportunity to set it up, but I'm not enforcing it for my students because I can't guarantee every one of them has a mobile device or is going to print out codes because our kids don't have access to printers. Um, so I don't, I don't want to go down that road um, just yet. And honestly, I think our kids are more suspicious of the phishing attempts and the stupidity than our adults are. Well, our kids just don't read email. So they, <laughs> they don't, you send out email and the kids are like, well, I don't read email. It's like, wow, there's a, already generationally how much things have changed. Um, but they, you know, so they won't fall for the phishing attack, which is nice. But we, we, again, yeah, same thing. It's on. So it's on for our kids. Um, I have looked at the reports. Some kids have it on. I'm, it's great. You know, it's another tool. Teach them how to use it now and use it right. Phil? Yeah. Hey, guys. <laughs> you're, cutting, you're cutting in and out, so it's hard to keep up sometimes here. Uh, you know, we're in Iowa, and there's a snowstorm outside right now. What is it, minus 10? So, yeah, uh, some schools I, are closing for wind chill tomorrow. Aren't yeah, you that means that his internet is go – do you have wireless internet out at your farm? I do have I, – I am running on 4 megabits right now. Ooh. So uh, <laughs> You're going to turn it to Max Headroom in pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had to close out of YouTube while I was doing it. Actually, I only have about two tabs open. So, uh, yeah. What? So, what was the question? Do you have <laughs> uh, two-factor turned on for your kids? Well, it's turned on, but not enforced. Just like right. uh, I think what uh, Carl said. So, yep. yeah, definitely. Um, we're in the same situation. We do allow um, wireless for their devices, but we also don't allow them to print. So they could uh, use like Google Authenticator or Two Step. So. All right. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I think uh, probably said enough about two-factor for tonight. So, <laughs> so, Carl, so you're up next. Well, actually, that ties directly into a lot of the new things that we've seen um, in the dashboard relative to security. Um, I actually had the opportunity when it was uh, 50 below zero uh, here in Iowa. I was down hanging out at uh, in Florida at FETC, um, which if anybody, if you guys get a chance, you're looking for a new conference to attend, 
Um, that's a really, really good conference. Um, <clears throat> they have a really, really solid. Five. What was that? Sorry. Chat's messing on its phone. <laughs> really <laughs> solid. Like you listening to Lance? <laughs> listening to Lance? I, I, on, our, on our YouTube channel. Uh, the They have a really solid IT strand. Um, and so I was doing a lot of um, – digital citizenship and cybersecurity sessions. And it's interesting to see different views on security and ways we go about securing our Google domains and securing our devices and where people draw the line in the sand, right? So this is really important, you know, like all four of us have decided that, you know, for us, two-factor authentication is non-negotiable. All of our adults are gonna use it right, wrong, or otherwise. Um, other places, they don't. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, people have been asking for, um, and I've shown people how to write GAM scripts to do, is uh, password refresh on a cycle. Okay, so I want every 45 days, every 90 days, every 30 days, I want my passwords to change. Yeah, force a password change. Um, Google now has that option there, and you know, some people got really, really excited about it. Um, I don't know as if I'm super, super excited about it as far as how I look at security um, because in most places I've been at that have really, really, really stringent password requirements, changing your password every 30 days. Um, you can't use a password that you've used in the last 12 months. Um, you can't use certain this. What you do is you end up seeing post-it notes with passwords on keyboards, um, under keyboards, on desks, um, written in pen on the edge of the screen um, on the bezel. Um, and you end up being a, have a worse security issue because ultimately everything we've started talking about tonight with two-factor authentication and even the stuff that I'm talking about now, it's our biggest security threat are our humans. There, yes, there are people out there sitting out there trying to brute force, trying to hack their way into um, different databases and that sort of stuff. But why work that hard when all I have to do is send a pretty email to convince somebody that, I am the who I say I am and send me your username and password. Um, and then today I have that. And for the most part, people do a terrible job with their passwords and use the same password for everything. So once I have your one password, I can start doing the other stuff that I need and get to all your other accounts too. Um, so what Google has done is, is they've given us some, some new settings, especially with passwords. Um, so that refresh the password um, on a set calendar um, some people, like I said, are really excited about that. That's there now. Um, you can change it and set it so it can have more requirements on the password. Um, you can have it so you can't use a password a second time. Um, and for those for those folks that are really excited about that and want to do that, it's awesome that it's there. Um, one thing that I think we're seeing a lot, those of us that have been in a Google dashboard for a long time and, and playing with domain stuff, Google's making a lot of changes or bringing a lot of changes to EDU that are going to make it more enticing for enterprise um, in a Google dashboard for a long time. Um, now it's, I'm hearing myself. <laughs> <laughs> How freaky is that? Ah, <laughs> Such a dork. <laughs> Such a dork. Um, so, so there's that. You also have the ability to check usernames, passwords, um, strength of password that still hasn't gotten super usable yet. As far as I'm concerned, um, you can go under security and you can see the the green, the yellow, and the red bars um, on the password. I'm not sure what sort of black magic voodoo Google used to say this password is a green versus this password is a red. Um, but then you get into the big conversation. And actually, there was one almost entire session where we spent all of our time talking about passwords. Okay. So there, there's a used to be this big, you need to come up with this super difficult password and it needs to have a bunch of different characters and we got all this leet speak. So it's capital this, dollar sign this, asterisk this, zero that, lowercase this. And in reality, all you're doing is making that more difficult for yourself. And the, the big trend is to go to pass phrases. Um, and I think starting next year, we might start to have this conversation with our kids when it comes to their passwords and start talking to them about passphrases as opposed to passwords um, to help with some of the security stuff and make it easier for them to, to learn. So um, some new stuff in the dashboard there, but I did want to pick your guys' brains 
what about passwords? Are you excited about having the ability to force <laughs> passwords on a regular basis? Um, enforcing more difficult passwords? Or are you talking to folks about passphrases instead? Um, where do you guys stand on some of this stuff? Um, for me, I've always been, I, I know best practice says it should be like every six months you change your password. The biggest issue I have for that is, is just like you said, it tends to cause people to write down passwords because they have to remember more passwords or more unique passwords. Um, I know Chad's a big fan of, and I have been for a long time. I'm really pushing out LastPass to my staff, talking about that. And I always tell them, you know, your school password should never be your password for anything else. It should be for your school account, period. As a matter of fact, when you go into Infinite Campus, that should be a different password. When you go here, it should be a different, everything should be a different password. And the nice thing about LastPass is it generates the password, it saves the password. When it's time to change the password, it'll autofill the old password and create the new password. So again, I'm putting a lot of faith in LastPass not to share my passwords or to get hacked, but I, that's kind of where I've gone is, is to, you know, kind of pushing that on my staff. So then it's very unique passwords. Um, it is the, the, the special character ones. And the other nice thing about it too is that a lot of times when they change their password, nowadays, I don't even know what my password is for some of that stuff because it's in LastPass. So if I ever tried, someone tried to hack me or spam me, I'd have to actually go to LastPass, open LastPass up, physically go through the steps of seeing the password. Um, and then by that time, I might catch on and be like, wait a minute, <laughs> rather than just typing it in. So I it, being able to enforce you know that kind of stuff, it's not a big one for me because... Again, I'm, I'm using the extension in Chrome and, and finding that to be much better. So I, I am a huge fan of LastPass. I use that as well. Uh, but having two-step verification on, pretty much who cares what the password is? Because as long as you're not stupid enough to click yes when you're not logging in somewhere, which I suppose could happen, they can't gain access anyway, even if they know your password. I'm going to stop you right there, though, Chad. Think about the number of your staff that don't have unique passwords for other websites. Well, yeah, that's fine. Um, but I, I can't control them and their other websites. I can educate them all day long and say, don't use this password. And I do that. I say, best password practice is to not have the same password everywhere. I can only control what they do here. And if me making them have a complex password causes them to write it down and put a sticky note on their monitor with the password on it, then that's defeating my best practice in my environment that I am in. I'm responsible for, I'm not responsible for all the other crap they have. That's not my responsibility. My responsibility is my domain and my network. So when I enable password policies, I'm thinking about that. I'm not thinking about all their other accounts. That's, that's their responsibility. And wherever those accounts resides, responsibility. So I'm not for that. I'm much more of a fan of two-factor verification or authentication or whatever. Two-factor. We'll just shorten it to two-factor. Because then it doesn't matter. Unless they quite literally just click yes without thinking. Like, hold on. I'm not logging in anywhere. Why am I clicking yes? Which I suppose they could do. But... Like Carl said, our biggest problem is the humans. Two-factor is going to hopefully help that some. Yeah, my big thing is, like I've talked about on here before, you know, Groundhog's Day, um, that I have people that will come up to me two weeks later and say, like, oh, yeah, 2 o'clock last Saturday or 2 o'clock two Saturdays ago, I got a text with my password from Google. And I'm like, you realize that means somebody logged into your account with your credentials, then the two-factor kicked in and they couldn't log in. Oh, what should we do? And I said, well, they didn't get into ours. We'll change your password just because, but do you use that password for anything else? Oh, I love that password. I use it for everything. And mm -hmm. I'm like, well, I'd check your bank account, your credit cards, <laughs> and everywhere else because y'all been hacked. Yeah, so Mark Kruko, am I saying that right? Sure. Um, I'm not quite sure what you want his meaning, but he says, and consider SSO using Google account. But, for um, other things, using the single sign-on. So it, yeah, but that's still, to, it, it still asks you for two-step verification when you do that. Right, but then instead of them having to create passwords for every different one, I think it's in response to Oh, yeah, to yeah, 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 right. So yeah. hey, so that actually 
so some of you know, some of you don't know, I developed FlexiSched. So what? FlexiSched, the premier flexible scheduling program for all your flexible scheduling needs? That, that's the one. Uh, so with the demise of Google+, Plus, uh, I, I was going to mention this earlier, and I, it sort of got skipped over, but there was some mass confusion. So if any of you out there that happen to listen to us, Yahoo's, are also developers that actually do the SSO oh. with the sign in with Google button. <laughs> there was mass confusion with the developers because uh, Google sent out this big announcement email saying that Google Plus was shutting down earlier than planned and that anyone that was using sign in with Google, that functionality was going to be turned off. Um, and then the next day, they sent up a, sent a follow up email saying that, no, not really, only if you're accessing this these pieces of it they're going to de be disabled but there still seems to be some confusion on exactly what they're turning off um so uh thanks google for giving developers like myself a goddamn heart attack <laughs> um because if you use FlexiSched, you see the big sign in with google button um which uh apparently is not going to break, but they are turning off the Google Plus portion of that functionality. Um, you that use OAuth 2 is what you use, and they're not turning that off from everything I understand. And I read a whole crap ton of stuff because it was very, very confusing and very, very uh, scary for me for a little bit. Well, that blew up on the GAM list serve too. I mean, again, speaking of Groundhog's Day, you guys know that GAM gets talked about a lot on this show. Um, and somebody, there's this big, because I don't really, I usually skim the emails. And there was this email that says, GAM going away. And I'm like, what the crap? Where, what's going on? And it all it all boils down to that. And I think I think you're right. Is It's the it's the old OAuth stuff that there's a reason we made a big switch to OAuth two, two years ago, year and a half ago. Um and so as long as your your stuff you're developing for is using OAuth 2 for the authentication protocols, you should be just fine. And that's that's what Jay Lee and, and some of those guys on the GAM listserv came in and said, no, 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 this, this is how we're interpreting this. This is what it means. If GAM start, stops working for you, um, that means you haven't updated it in like two years. So you're going to have to reset up the OAuth 2 authentication stuff, which you should have been using anyway at this point. Yeah. Has anybody so ever seen Jay Lee in person? He was at ISTE. Carl um, did, didn't you? Yeah, he was at ISTE. He presented um, on GAM. Weird. It was, like, it was almost... He didn't present on, like, YouTube or slides? And well, yeah. he's, he's yeah. never responded to any emails to come be a guest on the show, so I don't know if he really is a real person. He is not a figment of... He's a Russian hacker. He's a Russian so, hacker. If you're <laughs> listening, because I know some point in time you probably listen to this show... I mean, who, who doesn't? Guest. Who doesn't? Well, you know, when Cyrus was on, he was like, "Hey, I'm listening to the show all the time." You know, matter of fact, I think I may call him. I still have his cell phone number. <laughs> yeah, your big stuff. Um, actually, I'm the, huge. The uh, huge, huge, huge. Um, <laughs> the other thing relative to security, and actually, uh, Lance really should get the the cre the credo for this one or the credit for this one. Um, is the password oh. checkup tool from Google. Can I stop you just a sec before you, because so, Mark added to his thing on the uh, Q&A. He, he was, his point was, if you use SSO, uh, you definitely want to enable two-step. Can you imagine what someone would gain access to if they had access to your account? Yeah, no crap, Mark. <laughs> right. So it, it's a, it's a no-brainer to me to do the two-step. For yeah. for real, I I understand. I realize we've talked about two step for a long time here, so we can move on to Carl's password checkup. Well, yeah, I mean it's still it's still part of security, so it's still there. But yeah, so the password checkup Google Chrome extension. Um, there are a couple of really good articles. Lance, you were showing Gizmodo's was the better article that I that you were talking about. They explained a little bit more. It seems to be legitimately from Google. I went ahead and installed it. Um, so. It's your account has a bit, you know, it's checking your usernames and passwords um, against um, some of these you've been pwned sites and that sort of thing. Um, so overall, I think it's just another step. You can teach your end users about it and say, hey, this is a good way to stay on top of stuff because the more 
the more stuff we put in the cloud, the more stuff we put on somebody else's servers, both in your business and your personal life, the more protective of your passwords you need to be. Um, and then the more important a password manager tool. So like you guys use LastPass, um, but I found a few months ago, Google will just make up a password for me and then it keeps it. So as long as my Google account is 2FA'd, then I just let Google keep track of all my other passwords too. And I, they're all obfuscated. I don't even know what the passwords are. Um, Carl, Carl, so I get so confused if I let Google do it. Here's why. I have like eight Google accounts <laughs> and that's, it that's saves the I password think, yep. under the account in, to which you're logged into. So I got it, LastPass. I have one LastPass account and it goes across. I have it installed for all but two of those eight. I probably have more than eight actually Google accounts. So the repository stays the same across Google accounts. You want to departmentalize and silo your accounts. Correct. Don't cross that, the streams, buddy. Don't that, cross the stream. That just drives me <laughs> insane. It's not Groundhog's Day. That's a different Bill Murray movie. Uh, it just drives me insane because then I got to, I'm, I'm browsing, I pop to a site and then all of a sudden it doesn't fill in. I'm like, God damn it. And then I got to switch Google accounts and then go back to that side. It's just a PETA. <laughs> Way easier to have so, LastPass. No, I agree. So that's, Carl, that's the same reason I saying? use LastPass. Sorry, Carl, Phil, go what, ahead. What, what was this extension called again? Password Checkup? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's called Password okay. Checkup. It's an it's official Google um, Make sure, Chrome extension. So Make sure you get the official it, one. Yeah, if We'll it's put it in the show notes or in the, the YouTube description too. Google.ru, is that offered? Yeah, by, yeah. That offered? <laughs> D U G G L E E dot R U. Yeah, yep. <laughs> that, one, that one says so, it to your uh, comrade Putin. Uh, according to the Gizmodo article, they, they um, built this in partnership with Stanford University. So now not only will Google have your information, but Stanford does too. So I think it's perfectly safe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being sarcastic. It's like, truthfully, that's isn't, one of those things. Isn't right? Stanford's um, mascot the cardinal, which is red, like Russia? Do you see <laughs> the connection? Yeah, but they're, no, their mascot, that's their, mascot's their, a tree. their mascot's a tree. All right, but yeah. ours, isn't it called? But it's cardinal, the, the cardinal. Stanford cardinal. Yeah. yeah. Not the cardinals. No, the cardinal. cardinal. That's what I'm going after, not mascot, yeah. but whatever. Their name, their... We got another vote on this one. Mark just piped in on the on the the comments. He loves LastPass. Best part, the mobile app, so he has access from his phone too. So. Oh yeah, I forgot about that part, Carl. No, yeah, I did too. I keep forgetting I guess, that. That's I on guess there. I'm outvoted. Yeah. Well, just Go give it a try, Carl. You'll like it. <laughs> I'm too cheap. I don't want to pay for it. I don't well, pay the, for it. The free one does a bunch of the stuff. the the pay The premium one does advanced stuff. It does sort of that password monitoring stuff that your um your fancy Chrome extension does. Oh, yeah. I just use the free one. I'm cheap. So, so I'm speaking cheaper, of cheaper data, than you, big data and our passwords. What's a good way to visualize big data, Chad? Oh, you're transitioning to my, <laughs> my bit. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> he wasn't ready. I wasn't. I was still had last pass in my head. So we talked about it before being the groundhog day episode, but data studio has some, recent improvements of its own which are pretty cool it just keeps getting better and better and uh i i love data and i love helping people use data um and data studio is a great way to do that and free to use for all google domain users um so uh yeah i wasn't ready at all Carl. Okay, good. So, then, then take it just so so collect your thoughts. Yep. Because Bog has a question. He oh, wants okay. to know: Should you push out the password checkup extension to all the users? Um, I think if you're going to push it out, send out an email also to tell people what you're pushing out and why you're pushing it out. <laughs> it's been on the uh, the list serve uh, or the the community, the Gaff Giuseppe Admins community. People are talking about pushing it out already, um, as long as they're trusting it. it I. I don't know if I'm going to. I don't think it's a bad thing. Don't get the paid for version. Get the free version of that extension. 
of <laughs> like the password the checkup. Yeah. 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 He went to google.ru.ru. Yeah. Yeah. You got to pay yeah. 8 million yeah. Bitcoin. Ruble. Ruble. <laughs> it's three rules. <Ruble. laughs> I think I would need to do, I need to do a little more research on it um, to see if it's worth pushing out to everybody. We already pushed out a fair amount of Chrome extensions and apps and stuff as it is. Um, and then again, I think you're right. It would need to have a lot of, of education to let people know that it's there. Um, I may, uh, I may send it out as part of our uh, departmental newsletters um, to let people know that it's there initially um, to start watching it and saying, Hey, you can have this there. Um, but I don't want, I don't want to push it out and then get 5 million emails about, Hey, why is this up there? Like when I pushed out Chrome gopher, everybody lost their junk when they saw a little gopher in the top right hand corner. They didn't know what was going on. But it's nice to have a gopher up there. I think honestly, if, you all have, the time. if you have a, like a, a tech committee, maybe push it out to them first and get some feedback on it. Might be a good idea. No, agreed. Yep. Did you collect your thoughts yet, Chad? Yeah, it's just, and Good. some people might not find these as exciting as me, but I've, I'm falling deeper and deeper in love with Data Studio. <laughs> that was the Valentine's Day episode. <laughs> it is. We're sort of right in the middle. We're sort of right in the middle of a. Uh... It's a love affair between a man and his data. <laughs> Everyone should love data. Everyone should love data. So they've improved some of the coloring stuff. So, um, for those of you who use that, it's sort of a little bit of a pain. You can coordinate colors now uh, between um, data visualizations. So like, you know, pie charts and maps and things can have um, the, the, if the, the data point you're examining can have colors across data visualizations, which is cool. Um, my favorite new one was you can put images now into tables in there. So you can import images um, out uh, inside of Data Studio tables. Uh, and I can take... you use can you use the images to make make the graphs? I don't think so. Nope, okay. not yet. Okay, but it it does keep getting better and better and better, and uh, as always, I recommend, I'm looking for it now, um, signing up, as always, with the G Suite uh, update calendar, because that lists a whole bunch of improvements to all their all of their tools. So if you haven't signed up for those, so like on my calendar um, at the top, because uh, it goes in the sort of the all day events section of your Google calendar, um, it'll list and then it gives you so much detail inside of those updates. Um, the other thing that was interesting was they keep working on the PDF export stuff. Uh, so the they keep making that better because once in a while you it would get glitchy if you tried to download the data as a PDF. Because remember, you can download it's sort of like an awesome table. We've talked about that previously, uh, where you can download a copy of the refined data set. So if you put a whole bunch of filtering criteria at the top and you filter down to just what you want to see, you can then export that as a PDF all its own. Um, and they keep uh, refining that export because it would get glitchy once in a while. So, um, so let's, let's, let's back step a couple here, Chad. We, yep. we, we talked about data studio, we've talked about simple, um, or pardon me, uh, awesome tables, but in simplest form, how do you define what Data Studio is? It's a data, it's a data visualization tool, um, much like Tableau. It's not as advanced as Tableau; doesn't have all the features of Tableau, but they keep adding stuff to it that is making it more and more like Tableau. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is a super powerful tool. We're already using it. Um, you, when we did a broadcast from somewhere at a conference. I got sidetracked as I as I do once in a while, and uh, got excited because a, an idea popped on my head for um, individualized standards based reporting dashboards for every kid. I because, think it was ISTE. 
Was it? Because right after we went to the session with um, what's his name, Andrew Stillman. Andrew Stillman. Um, yeah, I can't remember when it was, but it was. It was. You could. Everyone can just watch the reruns of our episodes and figure out when that was. Because <laughs> <laughs> just what everyone wants to do. Everyone wants to watch reruns of us. So it's like it, Groundhog's Day. Watch yeah. it over and over. <laughs> but it was. It's possible. So I've already, you know, implemented a couple different dashboards here to easily visualize data. So my big thing in K twelve is we we say we're making data driven decisions, but in most cases we're not. And the reason why it is because teachers and administrators spend an exorbitant amount of time trying to get the data into a usable form because it comes in spreadsheets or CSVs or exists in a, a database somewhere like Ed Insight. And although some of those tools generate reports, they're still pretty cryptic. They don't have data visualization tools that make it easy for someone that isn't a data nerd to look at it and get something usable out of it. And that's what Data Studio helps you do. It helps you easily see what the data is telling you. Um, in pretty charts, graphs, and pictures. Uh, and I think that's that's part of my role and my team's role at my current district is to help teachers and administrators get data into a usable format that they can use super, super easily. Um, and we're, we're starting to do that and it's getting more and more exciting for me um, to help people make those connections to data and make decisions from those connections. That was a great explanation. The one um, thing the that I will say, the, the data studio, the entry point for it is a little steep. Um, it's, it's got a pretty good learning curve on it. Nowhere near Tableau's learning curve. Um, it's not as powerful or it's sorry. Awesome tables are not as powerful as data studio. But Awesome Tables is an easier entry point to visualization of data. Um, but Data Studio has a lot more flexibility. It's not it's not a one hour, I'm going to learn to make this thing do everything I want sort of tool, though. But can you in one hour get it to do limited functionality and then learn from there? Oh, absolutely. You can come yeah. to one of my sessions, yeah. the next conference <laughs> I wish I present. Especially, <laughs> especially if you're using a ConDrive data set. Um, you know, if you're using a data set that you know is going to be able to work in there. So it has nothing funky. Um, my problem is it's I, I'm never good enough. When, when I go to learn one of these things, listening to Chad and, and he's telling me to use this data set, I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. I want to use my data set. Um, so then I kind of sometimes overcomplicate it for myself a little bit. Um, because Carla, there's a reason I give you a data set to use so you can learn the tool efficiently. I know. Doesn't mean I follow directions very well. Yeah, I don't think uh, four of us follow directions. He doesn't play well well. with others either. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. So yeah, Lance, to answer your question though, you can absolutely, um, if you're going to dive in, use a simple data set. Don't go after something enormous and try to learn it. Learn, start simple, and then get more complex as you dig in. Um, it is an extremely useful tool that I just can't stress enough that we should be making data-driven decisions. And this tool can help us do that. And it's free. And it's free, not that Tableau, which costs you your left kidney. Correct. I mean, there's a lot of ones over there where we started looking at one called Homeroom um, that's equally as expensive as well as Tableau. Awesome. No, All right. Data Studio. Sorry, not, not, not <laughs> awesome tables. Data studio tables. Uh, and we already covered my other bullet, so we can. Yes, we did. All right, so we're on to Phil. All right. So it's February already, guys. That means uh, July is right around the corner, right? Yes. <laughs> e rate, baby. Uh, oh, oh e rate. Yeah, that too. Oh, I'm that's always the, I'm getting the, the bids from the 470s are rolling in. That's category two. Uh, both, yeah, yeah. Well, we're under contract for Cat One, so I'm good there. So, uh, we have about five months to pick out our next Chromebook for our 2019 2020 school year. 
Uh, and we usually purchase devices in July. Uh, I think that's kind of typical. Right after fiscal I mean, rolls over. Fiscal year, yeah. yep. Yep. And so right now it's about time to start looking and, and bothering our uh, sales guys out there on what, what's coming out, what's promising. Um, recently, I think, was it BETT, which is yep. a conference in London, yep. right? It's kind of an education technology conference. They just dropped some cool stuff. I think Asus dropped some new a new flip and Acer, which I'm a big fan of. Uh, they dropped a Spin 511 and a Spin 311. And then 311 has an AMD processor in it. Um, I am a huge fan of the Acer Spin products. They are durable and the performance on them is unbelievable. Um, I've had awesome luck with them. Uh, easy to repair, easy support, easy service. I'm definitely going to be checking one of those out and uh, seeing if it meets up to the R uh, Spin R11. So, have you guys seen those units yet, or I haven't? So, what's the just, what just would pictures. differentiate it from the the R11? Mm -hmm. So, the one you said has the AMD, but what about the? I just had an idea. I think next year we should go to Bet and do a live broadcast from London. Let's that'd be it. awesome so if someone would sponsor that trip we could do that's, that. that's, i knew you would go there and that's why i mentioned it so lance let in you work on getting us some sponsorship to go uh present from london can we do a gofundme i don't know i lived there you know for a while it'd and be good to get back me? no no london Anyway, Phil. So, did besides the AMD, what was the what was the were there any differences between the the R11 and the three? Did you say three eleven? Five eleven. Uh, it's okay, the five. Fine. Yeah. So the five eleven and three eleven are different. Uh, there's a Celeron processor inside of the uh, uh, five eleven. Um, it's an N four thousand, or you can get the N forty one hundred processor for that. Um, the uh, base on the five eleven is a convertible style. But the 311 is not. That's an upgrade 311 to okay. get that. Um, also, I think on the 511, you, you see the, the pens here. Uh, so when we got the, the Spin R11s, uh, there's nowhere to put this pen. So uh, we have to give them to the students' classrooms, you know, if they, if they want to use them. And the upperclassmen have been losing them left and right. So... The new 511, it looks like they've taken care of that issue, and there is a, a place to insert the pen into the a Chromebook dock, itself. A pen Ooh. dock. So, uh, Phil, you didn't have Acer send you a bunch of those uh, fabric -y loop things you can 3M yeah. sticky to your Chromebook? You know, I didn't. I've, I, I noticed, I saw those with our, um, what is it, our Surface Pros. Some of those came with our Surface Pros, but I didn't receive any with my R, uh, Spin R11. So they didn't, they didn't start sending them with them until later. Okay. Uh, but some people were able to get them after the fact. All right. That's you need good to ask info. the right people. You got to ask the right people, apparently. And I'll tell you. Contact they, uh, Chris. Isn't Chris the, the yeah. regional yeah. rep from Acer? I don't know. Yeah. Our show. Yeah, up in, in Nita. It was. Um. Although mine broke I'm, in like a week, and now it's just not there anymore. Well, if yours, I'm broke actually in a week, looking at the um, R13s. We're trying those out as possible staff ones, staff or staff devices. So those and that's those a 13 a, incher, the big, yeah, the big 13 guy. incher, and it has it does have a, a, a garage, a pen dock. yeah, garage, yeah, dock. Are are those convertible? Yep. Okay, because the R12 is also coming out too. Lance Lennon, what's yeah, the weight know, like so on those 13s? Um, comparable to the MacBook Air. A little heavier. Yeah, not, not little much, heavier? but okay. a little heavier. Okay. But solid. Feel, feels very solid. Man, they, they these Acers are tanks. I mean, they have been so durable for us. We don't, we don't have the the uh, ones with the pens. We went a model down from that. Um, but it's the same design, uh, just without the screen, the... Um, the Wacom, the Wacom way, way screen. So it, they were so incredibly solid. So uh, I, I flipped out a little bit the other day because the kids have figured out how solid they are and it's become this thing for them to stand on them. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no don't, the new, don't do that. that. It's a new YouTube challenge right there. Not no, no, no. 
Don't you stand shut on it. your cake hole, Phil. <laughs> so, so, that is, uh, if you break it by standing on it, that is a finable repair. I'm sorry. Right. That's uh, that, that is right professional. That is uh, intentional damage. So, so don't do that. One of the things I see as I'm looking up these this 511, Phil, because um, I haven't looked at them. I got an email from a vendor, um, and they're like, hey, these are new Chromebooks, and I'm not in the market for a new Chromebook just yet. Um, is I'm seeing that the 511 and the 311 have dual antenna um, Wi-Fi cards in them. Um, I don't think the the spins and the flips have that. No, the, they've done some upgrades. So I read these articles about this be before Bet. They had some launch articles that got leaked. Um, there's some great improvements inside these bad boys. Uh, I mean, the, the, the two by two eight hundred two eleven AC. I mean, that's that's a big deal. That's a really big deal. I was hoping for some early AX in one of these models. Um, as I mentioned, E rate earlier. Uh, looking at doing Cat two Wi Fi stuff with AX APs. Uh, I'm not ready for a new device either. So, um, but I was hoping to see something as yeah. AX starts to deploy starting to see some AX antennas inside of the devices, but not yet, I guess. Any other new ones that you saw, Phil? Uh, there was a new, geez, I can't think of the name right offhand, but it's like a Surface Pro where it has a detachable um, keyboard. Yeah, I, I think that's the HP. Interesting idea. And so instead of being actually convertible, it, detaches and then goes into Android mode when the keyboard's not attached. That's correct. Yeah. And I think they think those are pricey. I mean, if I, I don't know that that would be a student device and I can honestly yeah. see, I lost my keyboard. <laughs> right. Right. No, no, no. I, I mean, our, what we look for is durability and performance and by far, uh, like what Chad said, they're tanks. I have 200 of the spin R11 75s, whatever you want to call them. And I have not had a broken screen come to me yet, right? So, um, and that's been for the last two years. Nice. So great. they are a great machine, easy to work on, like I said before. So I'm definitely going to be keeping my eye out for those spin 511s. I just hope they don't break a good thing. You know what I mean? They, right. try, they, try, to in, they try to improve it and then uh, make it somehow less durable and crappy. Um, or I've seen that, that doesn't happen, or yeah, out of the price point, yeah. I've seen that happen, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. You you do once in a while, and it's it's super disappointing. So I hope they listen to us and don't break what they have hey, sir, by adding additional. <laughs> okay, I got to say this. At, at this point in time, we have coming in at the end of the hour almost seven people watching us live. I don't know if that's a record. But that's quite a few for us. So it must be about time to go because Lance's voice is starting to crackle. Yeah, he's getting real oh, it? It. Okay. He has to reset or something, <laughs> and then it goes away. Well, I have to my my USB mic. It has, it, I don't know what it is, but at a certain time, I have to unplug it and plug it back. I know. In that's okay usually, right. yep, you're good now. You, awesome. That's usually about the. That's our warning message that it's time to go. <laughs> so, give you a, all right. A good yeah, we are getting down there. And so a couple of things I wanted to remind people about, um, you know, the, the, some people may not be aware. And if you listen to the podcast, maybe you've heard it before. We do run, um, the, the, there's a, a summer Google for Education technical conference that we run in the Wisconsin Dells, July 15th and 16th. I am going to say this, that it, we are working, trying to get one to go in Las Vegas in early June. That would be like this, the, the end of the first week or beginning of the second week of June also. So Vegas. trying to hit Vegas. Vegas, baby. Um, yeah, Vegas in June. I don't know that everybody wants to go to Vegas in June, but <laughs> good location. Well, but it means cheap flights in anyway. And, you know, hotels and stuff are, 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 are fairly inexpensive, especially that time of year. Good yeah. place for a conference. Yeah, so <laughs> okay, we already have two strikes. I think I might have to put explicit on this one, Chad. You're getting close. So that's a couple of things to think about this summer. We'll uh, kind of try and get information down below um, about those. As always, we do want to thank our sponsors of the podcast, people that now we're not using at this time, but our mobile podcasting kit is provided by Wirecast and uh, both Telestream and GoGuardian have given us the materials to do that, which is always nice. I know you guys will, how many of you will be in NIDA? I'll, I'll be, be there. there. I'm, doing, I'm doing a workshop there. 
Okay, so I'm, just the, the two of you, Chad and I, won't be at meetup. So I don't know if we'll do it. Unknown yet. I may or may not go. If you guys all go, feel free to do a live broadcast from Nita. It's always nice. Or record it. Maybe that'd be a better idea um, since the Wi-Fi kind of gets really spotty there. I don't know. So we'll work on what I think we should get Verizon to uh, sponsor us a mobile hotspot that will be outside of the conference Wi-Fi's. That would be nice. There you go. Verizon, if you're listening. <laughs> I always wonder who's listening. Oh, wait. Bog just said he's two of the people listening or watching and Chad is one. So that kind of hurts my feelings. <laughs> Way to be a buzzkill, Bog. Wow. Why, why are you watching Bog. on two screens? He likes us double. I think it's our fan of the week. So, so until our next one, we want to say thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And uh, stay warm out there. It's cold again here in Iowa. So Blizzard. My, my school. Blizzard. We're, we're two hour late start tomorrow already. Gee, many Christmas. Two hours here. Yeah. Wimp. Kills too. Hey, rural districts, buddy. We have All one right. rural route. <laughs> one rural route. All right. Take care, everyone, and thanks for, for tuning in. <laughs>